Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. And today, just like the thumbnail and title suggest, it's one of those days when you have to just do a little bit of a gut check and take a look at the market and say, well, this was expected. What am I going to do now? Am I going to stick to my plan or am I going to bail? And really, it all really comes down to you and what you want to do. But I'm going to talk about the options that are available and uh, what history shows us. So first of all, everybody, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. If you haven't checked out uh, today's video, we did uh, NFA Live with me and Guy from Coin Bureau and uh, Ben from Into the Cryptoverse. Good stuff. It was a lot of good talk that we had. I couldn't believe Ben actually talked about altcoins. I got roped into talking about politics, which never makes anybody friends, but uh, you can check that out. There's a link in the description, and uh, I really I enjoyed this one. It was pretty good. So this is what we have today. Before we get to the market, I'm just going to let you know that it's probably going to get worse. I don't know if it's going to keep going down exponentially or if it's going to be a sideways action, a little bit of a, of a, of a drop down, but it's not looking good. And this is usually kind of how things play out. Now, I thought it might be a little bit better because of the ETF. We might have seen a big inflow, but that's not the case right now. But really, I'm not too concerned. However, I did see this today. And I thought it was interesting. This is from uh, Bitcoin Archive. If you don't follow uh, this publication, uh, you definitely should. They've got a lot of great information over there on X. I'll link them in the description. But it comes out and says, hey, just in, Bitcoin overtakes silver to become the second biggest commodity ETF, gold at $96 billion. And this isn't total value because this is just ETF. Gold has a, a total market value of over, uh, I want to say, $10.5 trillion. So uh, that's not the whole thing. But the ETF, yes, gold, $96 billion, Bitcoin, $27.5, and silver, $11.5 billion. And that's just week one. And it sounds great, doesn't it? It really does. Sounds good. Everybody's happy. Woo, ETF. I didn't think it was going to go through, honestly. But here we are. And what did that do for the price? Absolutely nothing. Dropped it down to the ground. And people are going to ask, why is it dropping? What's happening? What's going on? Well, it comes down to uh, there's more sellers than there's buyers. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really what it, what it is. And I, and I could, I mean, we could talk about, you know, the grayscale dumping and people swapping in and out and the different exchanges that are uh, going along with the process. And, you know, maybe there's a little bit of uh, problems with, with, with the macro economy and people are afraid of this. And, and there was a, there was a, a post actually by, uh, by Mike. And he said, Hey, if you bought IBIT at the beginning, you're down 16% in a week. And I have to tell you, if you're a traditional finance player and you just got into crypto and this is your first foray into a Bitcoin ETF and you're down 16%, that is the worst year you probably have. And that's a Thursday for us. So I'm not surprised if people are unloading this or not. I just really aren't. I'm not. I think that people got into the ETF thinking that it's going to go up forever because that's what, uh, you know, if Fidelity is behind it and BlackRock, it should. And maybe they dabbled into on the other side for altcoins and they got wrecked over on uh, Bitcoin at 60%. Like, I got I to gotta get out of here. And that's just how it is. People have to learn. And that's just what it is. Now, for us, for me personally, I just take a look at the history and just say, well, I think it's going to be all right. And to do that, I steal information from Ben's website. This is into the Cryptoverse, links in the description. The tool I'm going to show you is free, the DCA simulation. I love using it. And uh, if you want to sign up for the more um, advanced stuff, which will help you, I think. It helps me a lot. Links in the description to get 10% off the first month. But here's the thing. I just want to show you why some people like myself are pretty calm and other people are freaking out and it just comes down to time. Believe me, I know what you're going through. In 2017, actually, excuse me, in 2018, 2017 was a great year. 2018, I was exactly where you were and I had gone through a nice bull run and everything was supposed to go up and everybody lied to me. And then I had YouTubers telling me that, uh, don't worry, hold it's gonna be all right, it's gonna be fine. I was like, who the hell is this guy telling me? I did, I'm down like 70%. And now here I am, that guy. It's just amazing how these things kind of turn out, but it's just how it is. Time in the market beats timing the market in some ways, shapes, and form. I was going to show you something. Bitcoin, 10 bucks a day. And since we're all believers somewhat in the four-year cycle, let's go back four years. Because in 2020, we had a halving roughly on May 11th or 12th, correct me in the comment section. So let's just talk about the pre-halving. Is that the 7th? It's the 18th. Sweet Mary and Joseph. All right. It's the 18th today. We'll go back four years, right? January 18th, 2020, about three months away from the Bitcoin halving. If you just put 10 bucks a day into Bitcoin, it wouldn't be a bad time to do it. Even if you were up, or if, it doesn't really matter. I mean, because you're in a 
you're in kind of like this downward spiral. And even if you did that, again, looking at January, I wanted to show you this part here. When you're buying it, the asset price was $8,900 and you got 0 0.001 Bitcoin. That's for 10 bucks. The next day it was 20 and so on and so forth, right? But you see here that in the very beginning, you're already down because the market was volatile. But then it goes green for a bit. And then you just hit this slump in February. And this is usually what happens. Usually before a halving, we have a little bit of a slump or a drawdown and everybody freaks the F out. They're like, oh, I knew it. This four-year cycle is BS. I'm out of here. And that's fine, but it still, I mean, I'm not going to say that it's perfect, but it seems to follow along with a pattern. So you're down and you're feeling awful. Here you're really down <laughs> on March 12th. Look at this. On March 12th, 2020, you bought Bitcoin at 70, almost 8,000. You thought you were a genius because it used to be 10,000 and above. It used to be 20,000. So you're like, I'm the smartest man alive. And then the next day, when this thing called COVID comes out, it went from $7,900 to $3,800 for one Bitcoin. And your value got slashed in half. 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 And you're like, I knew it. This pandemic's going to go on forever. And it's going to be awful. And you're in the red. And you're sucking wind. And you're, you're, you're hurting because you haven't been in the, in the game that long. You just started in January, for Pete's sakes. Or maybe you even bought at the top. But you persevere because you got nothing else going on. You're like, well, 10 bucks, why not? And look at that. All of a sudden, right around the halving, things start to change. Things go up and you're feeling pretty good. You're like, hey, this is not bad. And then you just kind of coast on this for quite some time. And you keep putting in, keep putting in. 2020 is a great year. Hey, that halving goes by. You know what happens after a halving? All-time highs. And then before you know it, I mean, you're feeling pretty good. Look at this. Just look at this. This is great stuff. In 2021, you're a genius. You got a third of a Bitcoin. You've only invested 4,500 bucks and you got 22 grand in there. Ah, it's a great days. Then you come to May, same thing. Ah, oh, this is doing pretty good. And June, July comes in. You're still in the green. You're still in the green because you got in around right before the halving. And you're feeling good. You're feeling great. Look at this. Look at this. 6,800, you got 23,000, you got almost half a Bitcoin baller and everything's going great. And you're like, I'll never sell because it'll always keep going up, but it doesn't. And then it goes down. You're still on the green, but you see how much leeway you have here, just time. Look at this. My finger's getting tired, just scrolling through this stuff. This is why most people around here, as they're in the green, they're not, they're calm, just like me. Cause they're like, well, I don't really care. It would have been great if I could have sold, but I know. it'll come back. But then inevitably around some point, if you hold on too long, it goes down because brutal bear markets come in November 8th. And remember, this is all the time. This is two, three years, essentially. Now you're in November 8th, 2022, and you're only worth 10,000. And it sucks, but you hold on because you go through it. You're like, that's not going to last forever. I've already been through this. And now here we are again running things up and you're doing pretty good. And look at this, now you're at 30,000, 30,000. Ah, you've doubled your money, it's pretty easy and all you gotta do is do 10 bucks. The whole thing I'm trying to prove here is this, is that yes, it sucks right now, especially if you're new, but just sticking around, just dollar cost averaging, it usually tends to work out as time goes on. Now I can't help you if you're getting into meme coins and things like that, Bitcoin seems to be one of the safer, the safer assets in a most volatile market. But I just want to show you that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Just stick around. And then at some point, you'll probably, be, you'll probably have a YouTube channel like me telling people to stop worrying. <laughs> and then here you are. And then last thing I'll say, and I want to do, some, I want to do more Q&A and get everybody's thoughts today. But I talked about this on NFA Live. This was a, a tweet from Lady of Crypto. And, and she said, you know... If you think about it and you take a look back historically, this is the time, this is the Goldilocks time to really start thinking about investing into altcoins. And of course, me and Ben went around with this, but you know, Ben's Ben, I understand his position, but this is mine, which is I think, hey, that's what makes the world go around, a little bit of risk. And she points and she plots this out. In 2020, again, the halving was around May of 2020. This is the Goldilocks months when some of the 
greatest projects get get launched because they're not stupid enough to launch you know solely in the bear market and they're not stupid enough to, to launch at like the very all-time highs because there's only one way it can go and they build in the bear so they can crush it in the bull and you get stuff like this matic axi solana april 2020 sandbox shiba inu gala avax all around the same time so not everyone's going to be a winner but I think that the things that I've seen, especially like Web3 and AI and DEXs, uh, I think it's going to be pretty magnificent moving forward. It's just who's going to have the gut check to say, you know what, I'm going to stick around. I know this part sucks, but it's happened before. It'll happen again and I'll get out of it. And there's proof all around me. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Just want to kind of lay it out there. Tell people not to worry. Now, let's talk a little bit about taxes. Yay, taxes. Nobody likes this stuff, I know. But this was asked to me by uh, a subscriber. And they said, hey, Rob, what's going on with Voyager? Because I need to, at some point in the, in the US, I got to pay taxes. And I said, I don't know. Let's, let me reach out to Coin Ledger. So I tweeted out, or I X'd or put a post. I said, hey, Coin Ledger, how do we deal with Invest Voyager this year for our tax returns? And I said, those jerks still have 60% plus of our funds that they squandered on the three arrows capital with the trust me bro loan. It was stupidity. I said, can we claim the losses this year or not? And Coin Ledger says, yes, you can, which I didn't think that they would. We are finalizing external communications right now with the Voyager estate, which will discuss exactly how Voyager holdings and transactions are treated from a tax perspective. All Voyager users will get an email once live. We expect this to go live in the next two weeks. So I will keep everybody updated for your tax purposes, pleasures. <laughs> and uh, again, Coin Ledger, if you're having troubles with your crypto taxes, because they're due on April 15th. If you've got like 10 transactions, you don't need Coin Ledger. You can figure it out yourself. You're pretty smart. But if you got like 100 transactions or so and it's just confusing, you got a bunch of wallets, just make it easy. This is what I, this will be my third year using it. it. You can sign up for free. You can run things through, but just to, to get a report, it costs between 100 and $200. But trust me, for my CPA, I mean, it makes her job a lot easier. And I'm not going to pay my CPA, you know, 150 bucks an hour or whatever she charges. I forget. And I guess do it right here uh, just for this part, the other business or something else. And then also, as a reminder, uh, they have a portfolio track going live. So join that wait list. I've already gone through it. It's pretty cool. And that part is pretty awesome. It tells you like, you know, your cost-based analysis. When's a good time to, not when's a good time to sell, but when you're up, when you're down how much would be like short-term capital gains, how much would be long-term capital gains and everything in between. Check that out, links in the description and that's it for today. So look, that's really it. And I'll just take Seth's advice. Stay calm and hot on. That's really all you gotta do. See you in the next bull run. That's it for today. Everybody, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.